My name is Claire Grantseth, and I had the opportunity to interview Karen Hartman, who is the Administrator for Research Compliance at the Mayo Clinic, and she's had this position for 11 years. Just a few things about Karen. She got her undergraduate in nursing from Winona in 92, and then she attained her master's in research management at Duke in 07. And prior to her current position, she was operations manager for the regulatory support office at the Mayo Clinic. When I asked Karen what the most important qualities to be a manager were, she says that it depends on the um, position that they're in. It could be frontline supervisors working with the team, so both supervising and managing. Or for mid-level managers, it could be managing broadly and looking for next steps and asking the questions, where are we going and how do we meet the requirements for other leaders in this area? And Karen is at the administrator level, and so she sets direction. She manages operations managers who manage, who report to their own report staff. As a manager, she said that it's important to understand your employees and to let them know their role and the, the direction of the goal that the company is going. And it's important to know your team and to have a voice for your staff. I asked Karen, what usually prevents your team from getting things done or doing things better? And she said a lack of resources. If a workload grows and resources don't. And she said that sometimes you can set vision and goals for the year, but then you forget about it in the day-to-day -day busyness and you need to take a step back. And she said it's important that when the goals of the team change, you need to redirect. I asked Karen, how much time do you spend in meetings and are there any you feel like you don't need to attend? And Karen said right off the bat that there's two mini meetings, but it's the culture and there are plus and minuses to it. You need to be able to work across different groups and meetings are important in order to get representation from different departments together and to answer things that you couldn't via email or phone. And she also said that standing meetings or huddles are important to make sure that people are focusing on top priorities. I asked Karen, how much time do you spend individually versus with the team? And Karen says that she doesn't sit with the team, but it is important to have one-on-ones. And she said that it varies and it could be quarterly or once a month, depending upon her staff. And she uses that time to focus on career development and where her staff wants to go. And she said that it's important because people don't usually leave organizations or departments but they leave managers that they don't want to work with. I asked Karen, how often do you receive feedback and how do you do it? And Karen said that whenever her and her team come up with a plan, she makes sure to ask questions. So does that make sense or do you have any other thoughts? And she said that informal and intermittent feedback are very important and to have a monthly formal meeting or a round table to have opportunities to ask questions as to what's working well and what's not. When I asked Karen what the best and worst part of her job was, she said that her and her team lead a lot of the research and they bring innovations to patients and she interacts a lot with the FDA and the IRB and they bring clinical trials to Mayo's patients and so she likes to answer questions about how they can better improve the future and enjoys that impact. She also says that she likes interacting with her team and seeing them succeed. And one of her least favorite parts, and she would say that for most other managers as well, is that when you have a staff member who isn't performing where they need to be. And it's hard when you come on to a new team to manage and those individuals who are performing very well were hired by somebody else. And so then you have to ask yourself, how do I get them to the standards that you're expecting? and it's important to be able to give tough feedback. I asked Karen, do you believe it's possible to achieve work-life balance? And she has a new philosophy, or there's one out there that's work-life integration. 
and she said that from my generation and people with young families, um, we have to be able to integrate the work that we need to get done while also balancing the personal side of our life. She, does, she said that it's tough for an organization and individual to turn off because we all have our phones and it's so easy to answer work emails on that. And with this philosophy, it allows for her to say, leave at three in the afternoon and go to a, her child's event, but then connecting in the car for 20 to 30 minutes and responding to emails. And she also said that when she was getting her master's and she had young kids, when she put them down to bed at nine, she worked on her master's and gave up me time for a portion of her life. And she also said that a lot of organizations are tracking and people aren't taking their vacation time. And she said that's very vital because it's important to take that time to actually refresh and to really disconnect. I asked Karen how she handled change and she said that it's important to recognize that change is inevitable and being open to it and to realize that it might bring something better than you can see in the moment. And she said to also be very transparent to yourself and to your team and the more you, more you do it, the more you're going to embrace it. I asked her how are, relation, how are you relational with subordinates while also creating a professional atmosphere. And Karen said that she's definitely more on the professional side and that it's important to recognize components that are important to each individual. So for instance, some individuals like the chit chat at the beginning of the meeting and like to be asked about their families or activities they're participating in. Well, some people maybe like one question or maybe not at all. So it's about building relationships and learning their style. When I asked Karen about some challenges as a woman in leadership, she said that you might have to sell yourself more and to prove that you do have experience and knowledge in the field that you are in. She was in the military and now at Mayo. She works quite a bit with, with men, so it's important to have an inclusive atmosphere. And then I asked Karen, how do I prepare for a career at Mayo as a public relations major and marketing minor? And she said that it's very important to have good skills in writing and to be able to understand social media and all other online platforms. And she also said that the Mayo Clinic is a more conservative healthcare environment. So asking myself the question if that's an environment that I want to be in. And that concluded my about 20 minute interview with Karen Hartman and it was very insightful to get her feedback on just the qualities that are important to be a manager and just how important it is to build good relationship with your staff. And I think the main thing that I took away is that people don't necessarily leave departments or organizations, but they leave managers that they don't want to work with. So that's the importance of having just that quality relationship with your team and but also lobbying profession.